All right, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is brought to you by some of my favorite people over at Storyblocks. A little bit more on them in just a bit. Today we are talking transformation. Specifically, I released a behind the scenes for a video I shot for Cometeer Coffee. That was about a week ago. And I'm not sure if anyone actually realized, but every single shot in that video was captured using nothing but a tripod. No handheld, no camera movement at all whatsoever, which is why I wanna break down how these shots really came to life in post. Now to refresh your memory, here is the final video. So there it is. Let's go ahead and dive into Final Cut Pro X, where I edit all of my videos. You can see this is our timeline here with all our footage and sound effects. Speaking of sound effects, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete all of them out of the sequence so we can just focus on the visuals for today. So we'll start up here with this adjustment layer. All this is is an adjustment layer with our film grain at 50%. This helps a little bit with banding for footage with lots of dark negative space. And believe it or not, that subtle film grain actually helps to accentuate that dry ice vapor and fog and all of these shots. It just makes that steam look a little bit more visible against that dark background. As you can see, the adjustment layer spans the entire length of our whole timeline from start to finish. And underneath it, we have all our footage. These first few shots here contain that opening sequence of placing down the cooler, opening it up, and then pulling out the capsule from the cooler. Now, of course, the camera doesn't move at all for this opening sequence, but the clips are cut together to change on the beat of the music. As you can see, the first clip is slowed down to 20% of its original speed, the second clip is at 40%, and then the third clip is also at 20%. Across these three clips, we have another adjustment layer, and this layer contains our zoom in. Rather than adding a scale in on each individual clip separately, I made an adjustment layer over the whole thing because the camera doesn't move, and I want that consistent zoom in across all three clips. If you look over here, you can see we start at 100%, and if we click to our next keyframe, we are at 25% here at the end of that adjustment layer. And if we play that back, you can see that it looks like the camera is getting closer and closer throughout. Now you might be wondering why is this second clip here on top of the clip underneath? And there is a reason for that. On this top clip here, which is our shot of the lid being opened, we have a mask. And if I disable the mask, you can see what it looks like underneath. The lid opens and then we cut to the next shot and you can see that there is a lot more of that dry ice smoke and vapor going on, making the cut between those two clips pretty jarring, as you can see. Now, despite being a hard cut between the two clips, I did want it to be a little bit more seamless and natural and not as abrupt to the eye, which is why I went ahead and drew this mask to bring in that dry ice smoke of the next shot. So if we disable the shot underneath, you can see that all we've kept is the opening of that lid and then underneath is actually our next shot with all of that dry ice smoke and vapor. So here's what that transition between those two shots looked like before we added the mask and here it is after. Now moving along, we of course have this close up here. And a lot of people ask me, how did this shot end up being so sharp despite being punched in <laughs> 250 to 260%. That is really pushing it as far as a zoom in goes, but I'll show you how we made it work. So as you can see here, the clip file name is C0981, same as the previous clip. So it is actually all the same shot, but to get that zoom in, I started at 250% and throughout the clip, it zooms into 260%. And if if we turn on our transforms here, you can see that we actually have a little bit of X and Y movement as well throughout the clip. And if we zoom out here, you can see the whole frame actually moves down. And this is to keep that capsule in the center of the frame the whole time. It's not perfectly locked to the center. It's just a keyframe at the start of the clip and at the end of the clip so that it stays more or less in the middle for that kind of tracking motion. So as far as what the clip looked like before we did anything to it at all, it looked like this. And of course, once we add our transforms, we get something that looks like this. Now, you might have noticed that because we cropped in so much and added that movement, the clip actually cuts off at the top here. You can see it's a lot darker where there's nothing underneath, which is why we added in this shot here. And then we added this draw mask to kind of smooth everything out. And this is what it looks like if we take away that bottom clip, which is why we added it there, as well as that mask to smooth everything out. 
So I've just realized I've actually got this sharpen effect here on this clip to sharpen up the capsule. And that's actually a mistake. In the final version of the video that I put out on social media, I did not use the sharpen effect. What I actually did instead was went into my plugins here, went down to neat video and added the reduce noise version five to our shot. Now this is a noise reduction plugin that I use for those shots that have a lot of noise. It's one of those things that you don't really want to use, but it's nice to have when you need it. In this case, the shot actually isn't that noisy, but because it is punched in so much, we do lose quite a bit of detail and the background did get a little bit muddy. So what you do is you open the options window and you start building a profile. So you make a big square in this kind of negative space, you build a profile, it detects all the noise in these different channels here, and then you can go into your adjust and preview, zoom in a little bit here, have a look at our capsule, and under the spatial tab, I actually turned on sharpening, and you can see what that does to the label. I might turn up the fine details just a bit, a little bit in the medium, and then a tiny bit in the large as well. Now that's looking really sharp, so I'll hit apply. And here's a side-by-side -side of what that shot looks like before and after this effect is applied. Now moving along, we've got the close-up of the capsule in hand. This is what the footage originally looked like, and what I actually did was I went in and I rotated it 180 degrees. I also added in the zoom in from 105 to 112 percent and the reason for this change in rotation it's actually a couple things one the label looks a little bit more natural and upright in this position and the second thing is that there's just something about the light hitting the capsule from the bottom instead of the side or the top overall just gives this shot a more interesting feeling it's worth noting that i didn't feel like 20 percent speed was slow enough to get that dramatic feel i was going for with the shot so what i did was i actually slowed it down to 10 percent speed reversed the shot and then added something called optical flow. Now, if you're not familiar with what optical flow does, it essentially takes a clip that has been slowed down beyond its frame rate and adds in those extra frames to make it look smooth. Here's what 10% speed on this shot would have looked like without optical flow. And here it is with the optical flow applied. Now, going from these previous shots with all of this dry ice everywhere to a close-up shot without the dry ice or the fog, the shot just feels really empty and it definitely needed that extra something. So of course I went in and added this smoke overlay from Storyblock. Now, if you didn't already know, Storyblocks is actually one of my most favorite online subscription services, and with a membership plan, you get unlimited downloads of high-quality, royalty-free stock footage, motion backgrounds, After Effects templates, and of course, overlays like the smoke we used for this sequence. In other words, Storyblocks is an absolute lifesaver when it comes to getting pickup shots to your project, whether that's a personal thing you've been working on or some work you've been doing for a client. Let's say you need a drone shot of the city for a car commercial you've been working on, but your city has really tight drone laws. Well, don't worry because Storyblocks has you covered with a massive library of drone footage. Or let's say you just need a funky background for your next title sequence. Well, they've got that too. If you're ever in need of video assets of any kind to help tell your story, then head to the link down in the description below or go to storyblocks.com slash Daniel Schiffer to learn more. Once I applied the smoke overlay to the footage, I drew a mask around the hand roughly to keep it off of the hand. I added a very slight blur to the fog to keep it in the background. I used the add blend mode, then lowered the opacity to 10%. And then I really zoomed in here to almost 300% and rotated our smoke just a little bit to fit the frame. And here is the before and after of the capsule in hand close up. You can really see how something so simple like adding in that smoke to create more movement and adding in that zoom in really takes this boring kind of stagnant shot that was captured on a tripod and makes it a lot more dynamic and interesting. Same kind of thing here with our next shot of the label being peeled off of the capsule. Originally, this shot was a lot wider and it was completely stationary. Now, if we turn on our transforms here, you can see our scale started punched in all the way at 227% right in on that label. And by the end of the shot, you can see that we're at 237% for that zoom in effect. Now for our X position, you can see that we kind of have this slider movement from left to right. So what I did here, and I'm just gonna turn on our horizon so that you can see what we're doing. My goal was to kind of have this label where it's peeling be in the center of the frame. So we set a keyframe here at 430 on the X axis. And if we skip to the end, you can see that we're still in the middle here where that label is peeling back. And that is at negative 267.6. And once again, we have this boring, stagnant tripod shot that we've gone ahead and punched in on, 
added that slider movement in post and we have something that looks a lot more dynamic and interesting. Now for this shot here where we pull the puck out of the capsule, it's actually the exact same thing as the previous shot, but instead of doing that slider movement on the X axis, we've actually gone ahead and added a movement to the Y axis. So here you can see we're punched in at 120%. We start at 170 on our Y axis. We skip forward to the end frame and you can see it's negative 162.1. And you can see here, this is our whole frame moving up and down as we go through the shot. And like always, this is the shot before, and here is the shot after. Now for the puck swirling around the beaker here, this is actually an extremely punched in shot. I did not originally intend to go this far in in post, but when I looked at the original shot on the computer, I noticed all of these smudges in the beaker that just didn't look good. So what I did was I punched in on our scale at 300%. I rotated the shot a little bit and adjusted the position. I also felt like the background and the darker areas of the shot were too dark, which is why I added another smoke overlay from Storyblocks to that. It just kind of ties it in and blends it more seamlessly with the other shots in the sequence. And then our final shot here, once again, we have a scale zoom in from 100% all the way to 125%. And of course that smoke overlay because I felt like the background was just a little bit too dark. And that's it. Once we put it all together, this is what we get. Thank you. 